Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that we link with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. And as you can see, another hotel room. Um, oh, yesterday was a long day. Um, you wouldn't realise sometimes how big this country America is unless you visit here and you really travel around it um, to fly from LA here to North Carolina, like over five hour flight. Then you've got the time zone differences. That's what's been doing me here, the time zone differences. So apologies that this video probably coming to you a little bit late. If you're over there in Europe, you expect this video normally round about nine, 10 o'clock. It's a little bit later because I've got basically got to try and get some sleep, man. I'll tell you, I was absolutely knackered yesterday, but back in full effect today and looking forward to North Carolina. Um, the vibe there is very good. They're really excited to have Arsenal in town. There's lots of events going on. We're going to be doing a Q&A as well today here in um, North Carolina. So it's great to be here um, in Charlotte. And um, it should be great for Arsenal as well. But as every fan I'm sure I meet here in Charlotte is going to be asking is, who are we going to be signing? And there was a lot of excitement around um, yesterday evening when the news came out that basically Wilfred Zaha has put in, well, he hasn't put in a transfer request, but he said to Crystal Palace, basically, that I want to leave. This is stage one in trying to engineer a move, basically. We've heard all the rumours. Those rumours have been flying around now for quite a few weeks. But um, Wilfred Zaha was away at the African Cup of Nations um, with the Ivory Coast. He did really well for them. They did end up getting knocked out. Now that he's back, he wants to get his future sorted out. Now, he wants to join Arsenal. That is his club that he supported as a kid. That is a club that he would love to go and join. But of course, it's complicated. He's under a contract with Crystal Palace. He's one of Crystal Palace's... Um, well, he's not one of. He is the main player for Crystal Palace. Their star player. Um, they've already lost wan Saka to um, Manchester United. They're in the process, Crystal Palace, of the, at the moment of trying to sell the club. And really, they want to hang on to Zaha with their life. That is why they've put such a big price tag on him. The rumours are anything from around about 80 to £100 million is the sort of money that they would like to get for him. The reality of it is, if he tries to force a move, we know at the moment with the whole Koscielny thing that more or less you as a club start have to consider in selling this player. And I think the price will probably be something between 60 to 70 million pounds to get this deal done. Arsenal have all of a sudden got a bit more money to spend by the looks of it. And they do want to get Wilfred Zaha. We've been told that he's priority number one for Unai Emery. Unai Emery is the, the player that he would really, really like to sign. And as I said, it's just stage one at the moment in this deal happening. It's going to be protracted. It, for me, would be amazing if it happens. I, I really, really rate Wilfred Zaha. I think he's um, underrated by a lot of fans. The years of watching this guy, you know, when he plays against us, he terrorises us. I've seen him when he plays against many other teams. He has a lot of ability as a winger and he would be just what we need going forward. And we still got massive problems at the back and we know we need to solve those but going forward, he will add an extra dimension to us. Remember, there's no more Welbeck, right? So, you know, we need to get goals from other areas as well. Um, the other thing we have to consider with this is that we're being told that Everton um, are really interested in signing Zaha as well. Remember, Everton um, are owned by Mashiri, who used to be involved with Arsenal, by the way, um, another billionaire. He... Um, owns uh, Everton, even we hear that in the shadows, Uzmanov might even have something to do with it, but that's not confirmed. Um, and they may be willing to splash the cash as well for a Wilfred Zaha. So that'd be good news for Crystal Palace if he does end up going because they could start a bidding war. However, from what we know, the player wants to join Arsenal. That is a club he wants to join. And he'd be able to emulate um, one Ian Wright, who also left from Crystal Palace and came to Arsenal and became a mega star. So let's see how that one turns out. Um, the other option, of course, is Everton. As I mentioned, Everton, Everton Sarres. Um, again, uh, the player from Gremio, another winger, 23, 
uh, Brazilian international, just had a great Copa America. He's been linked heavily with Arsenal. I told you yesterday of the rumours that Arsenal uh, sent doctors out to check him out. Um, there's rumours now that Arsenal have sent a delegation over there to speak to Gremio about trying to get this deal done. It would be a lot cheaper. Um, he valued at around about £36 million, but obviously unproven in European football. Um, he's one. He's uh, apparently the last remaining Brazilian to be playing um, in that league that plays for the national team. And also there was a, you know, Instagram post yesterday where he's trying to learn English. Again, another hint that um, possibly he could be heading to um, Europe, to England. Everton again, and that's very ironic, that Everton are yeah, interested in Everton, but Everton apparently they're also um, in the hunt as well for Everton Sarri. So it looks like um, he's like an option one, option two. Um, and then there's Danny Chabelos or Cabelos or Cebelos, whichever way it's pronounced, or probably all three of them wrong, but again, heavily linked. It's said that Arsenal are really confident in getting this deal over the line as well. It will be a loan deal. Um, for the um, player from Real Madrid, he's 22, uh, really, really talented player. We've also heard rumours that there's a bit of dispute at the moment between the hierarchy at Real Madrid. Some of those <clears throat> who are saying loan him out for just one year. Some of them are saying loan him out with the option to buy, which that was the, the preferred deal for Arsenal, the option to buy one because then they'd be able to secure him at the end and he wouldn't just go straight back. So again, <clears throat> one that we're going to have to see how it all plays out. But Danny Sabeos, again, on Arsenal's radar today. And then there's rumours about Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Um, rumours that Manchester United have made a bid of um, any from wh whichever rumour you want to believe. There's some are saying 62 million, some are saying 68 million. But they're saying, all of the rumours are saying that Arsenal basically have turned that down and do not want to sell Aubameyang. Whether these rumours are true or not, I really don't know. You look into the rumours, it's really hard to find any sort of real basis for how these rumours have come about. And certainly, <clears throat> excuse me, certainly in looking at Aubameyang in pre-season so far, he is looking as sharp as a razor and definitely Arsenal should not be looking to sell him. But the rumours today about Aubameyang to Manchester United and Kieran Tierney, also apparently increasingly confident that they're going to get this one done as well. Negotiations still continuing over Tierney, but Arsenal are feeling confident about him as they are very, very confident now that the William Saliba deal will get done. And uh, I've even heard over here that an announcement should be made um, within days over the Saliba one. Um, I won't hold my breath because I was sort of told that over Tierney about two weeks ago that that was definitely going to happen. I do think it still will. Um, but Saliba does look like it's going to happen, although, as we know, he will be loaned back for a year, which still leaves us in the same problems with defenders. All right, let me see if I can get into a couple of your rumours right here. Sorry, a couple of your comments. Um, let's go with this one. Uh, Ayusa Singh, he says, uh, Zaha has told Palace he wants to leave. It's our chance now. And he's really right. Um, this is the chance for Arsenal to make a very big signing. Um, we've been told to be excited by Josh Kroenke. I will get excited if I see a couple of these calibre of signings come in. If, if, if it's uh, Zaha, Sores, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be excited. Um... Max Adul, I hope I pronounced that right. He says, Eddie Enketa needs a loan move to a team where he can play every week. Um, that should really prepare him for his first team at Arsenal. That, that, that's if he went on loan, did well, and then came back and got into the team because we see that a lot. Look at Bielik. He's done really, really well on loan. Now, you know, he can't get into the team. He's not, you know, he's so he's looking to get a move. So... Loans can work out. Loans sometimes don't work out. Um, what, you guys are trying to kill me with the names today, aren't you? Architectius Dux says, 65 million for Zaha. Get your head out of the sand, Robbie. I prefer Soares, Tierney and Chabellas for less than that. Yes, I suppose you could put all those together and it would work out. Well, it wouldn't be less than... Well, yeah, it might. With Chabellas would be a loan, so possibly work out less than that. But if we're a club that's showing real ambition, which is what we're being told, 
65 million pounds or 60 million for Zaha shouldn't be a problem and also get Tierney and Chabelos. Why not? Why should we have to go for option two in Soares? I don't know. Listen, I've not seen enough of Soares to know how good he is. Only the bits that I saw in the Copa America, which he did look good. But I've seen Zaha on a regular basis and I know he would improve Arsenal. Um, Jarek Lewis says, stop it, Robbie. Zaha is an overrated player that looks good because he's at Crystal Palace. He isn't good enough for Arsenal. I, I think that's ridiculous. I've seen Zaha a lot playing against Arsenal, playing against other teams in the Premier League, and he's one of the most dangerous wingers in that league. I think it's not just because if he's playing for Crystal Palace. I think to myself, if he's playing for somebody better, he'd be even more dangerous. He is right up there and as, as a deadly winger, and I think he would improve Arsenal massively. If you've got him on one wing, um, Aubameyang on the next wing, Lacazette through the middle, that is going to be frightening for a lot of teams. But there's quite a few people with this guy. This guy here, Frank Nitty 3000 says, whoever's doing Zaha's PR is an effing genius. What a load of hype for an average player. I don't get it. I've, I don't know, man. It, you see, this is the thing I think sometimes that if... If it was Zaha that was coming in from Brazil, everybody would be like, yeah, get him, get him, get him. Because he's playing for Crystal Palace, people are thinking, oh, listen, he's a quality, quality winger, right? There's not much better than him around in the Premier League. I'm, the only sort of players I can think on the wing better than him right now in the Premier League, you've got to go for the City guys, um, the Man City players, obviously, uh, of Sane, and then even then, it's touch and go for me. It's touch and go, right? You know, Raheem Sterling, yes, definitely better. Um, the guys at Liverpool, but who else is better than this guy on the wing? He's, well, Hazard, but Hazard's now moved on. You know, he would definitely be a massive upgrade for Arsenal and we just the sort of signing we need. But I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments. It's, 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 you know, it's all about everybody's opinions. Thanks for watching the show today. Listen, look out for all of our content coming out here from Charlotte in North Carolina. And looking forward to the game tomorrow that's going to be here. Arsenal versus Fiorentina. It's going to be a big one.